Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And welcome to St. Aloysius Parish on this, the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. A warm welcome to all of you joining us here this morning and to those of you watching from your homes and to our celebrant this morning, Father Joe Sullivan, with his assistant, Tara. Readings this morning may be found on page 493 of your Sunday Missal. I invite everyone to stand. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the community of the Holy Spirit, be with all of you. And with your spirit. And as we prepare to celebrate this Mass, we pause for a few moments to call our sins, especially our failure to love, so in different ways. At Mass today, we are reminded of Christ's love for his church, a love which is reflected in the love of husband and wife, <coughs> man and woman, in the self-giving of marriage and the love into which all of us are free to enter. In our daily living, that we choose to walk with Christ or choose to turn him away. And for our faults, we ask forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God, God to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have been in my thoughts and my words, in what I have done and in what I have told you, to my mouth, A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, If you are willing to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve whether the gods of your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord 
who serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went, and among all the people through whom we passed. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord that the humble hear and be glad. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against evildoers, to cut off their remembrance of them from the earth. Taste and see that the Lord is good. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Many are the afflictions of the righteous one, but the Lord rescues him from them all. He keeps all his bones. Not one of them shall be broken. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Evil brings death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Taste and see that the Lord is good. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Be subject to one another out of reverence, reverence for Christ. Wives, be subject to your husbands as you are to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, just as Christ is the head of the church, the body of which he is the Saviour. Just as the church is subject to Christ, so also wives ought to be in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her in order to make her holy by cleansing her with the washing of water by the word, so as to present the church to himself in splendor, without a spot or wrinkle or anything of the kind. Yes, so
so that she may be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as they do their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hates his own body, but he nourishes and tenderly cares for it, just as Christ does for the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a great mystery, and I am applying it to Christ and the Church. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. You are the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. When the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, and that is without washing them. Sorry, wrong. I have put it at the right place. There we go. Jesus said to the people, Very, I, very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. When many of his disciples heard this, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then, what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe, and who the ones that they would betray that they would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told him, that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. And because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve. Do you also wish to go away? And Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the word of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. And this, my brothers and sisters, the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One thing we don't talk too often about these days is marriage. And you know that second reading, okay, from St. Paul to the Ephesians, is loaded with an awful lot of compassion and some beautiful ideas that couples, married couples, can put into practice. And we too are encouraged by Christ to imitate this idea of loving, loving each other as best we can. And I've often heard over the past 55 years, some, some people, not all that many, but some people who talk to when they're preparing for marriage, well, you know, uh, marriage is just a piece of paper. 
Well, if you think it's a piece of paper, you better go and find someone else to do your marriage. And I think this happened maybe four or five times in 55 years, so that's not a big record. But it's true that some of the attitudes people have, certainly when I say Paul, I remember over the years too, women, okay, calling, say, Paul, a chauvinist. Because of what he says, you know, in that letter to the Ephesians. So I'd like to just share a few thoughts with you on that as we prepare for the Eucharist. There's a story told of a young man, Paul. And he came, one of his friends, Frank, says one day, How come you've never married? Sure, you call the girls of date. You must have met at least one you wanted to marry. And Roger replied with a sad face. He says, yes, well, there was Sharon. She had everything I was looking for. I mean everything. And she was really the perfect girl. So why didn't you marry her? And asked Tom. And Frank then said, she was looking for the perfect man. Mm -hmm. And really, in our life, married or not, you're never going to be a person who is absolutely perfect. We all have our flaws. And one author has tried to suggest that, that that's one of the reasons why we have so many breakups in marriage today. They're saying that in Canada and the States, it's over 50% now, divorce rate. That tells us that even many Christian marriages are dying because people expected perfection or trying to create it in their partners or in themselves. Now, perfection is not what Christ expects of us. In any situation, whether as a priest, bad person who is married, and those who are called to lead single life, Catholics especially, should know that what is really key to a fantastic marriage, Paul says it, is living in the flesh. Now that can be kind of uh, something you didn't really want to hear. But I'm talking about the one flesh that Christ talks about in Scripture as well. That two people become in the sacrament of marriage, as St. Paul says, one flesh. But I have to emphasize that the term one flesh doesn't just refer to the physical body. And centuries ago, the mind, the body, and spirit were thought to be entirely separate, with the body coming near the end, full of evil and being sinful. But Catholic theology sees the mind, body, and spirit as a sacred unity. So you don't become one flesh with someone simply by having a sexual intercourse with them. When we give our bodies to others as sexual intimacy, it is a real symbol for giving of the whole, it's a symbol for the giving of the whole person. And that calls for a depth of interpersonal commitment forever and the creation of a fruitful life. And this one flesh unity and commitment is the real location of marriage. And this is why merely living together or having marriage outside of the sacrament is not good preparation for receiving the sacrament of marriage or being called to be husband and wife. When you choose to marry as a Christian, you're saying yes to a unique and a personal call from Jesus to allow yourself to be born into a new unity, husband and wife. And your new oneness with your spouse is part of Jesus' own vocation to bring life and holiness to us and to our world. And like I said before, some people the attitude is still there. Marriage okay, is a piece of paper. And for Catholics, once you are married, all of your daily decisions will be influenced by the Christ life that forms you in one flesh. The way you speak to each other, the way you forgive each other, the way you support each other, 
Now, this is not so very, very important. It takes guts and generosity to live a Christian marriage in the mind of what St. Paul is saying there today. But it shows the world an image of real marriage that many people have never seen. You know, there's a lot of TV shows and films, and maybe one of them never, I don't think I've ever watched it, Desperate Housewives. But the people I know who do watch that type of a program, while wow, they're really taken up with it. They show a lifestyle that promotes terrible models of intimacy. They'll make you desperate. And indeed, they will. All the lies you see in these programs, the jealousy, the selfishness, the infidelity, the anger, wrapped up in a few unstable friendships. That's what our world projects marriage to be, a piece of paper. But you must remember that old song. You know, love isn't love. You know the end? Come on. Love isn't love. You older people. Love isn't love until you give it away. I guess I'm the only one who remembers that song. You'd have to sing it, Father. But there's some couple that Paul says on marriage. He says, out of respect for Christ, be courteously reverent to one another. That's loaded with meaning. Love each other the way you would love each other as Christ loves you. A couple of commu who communicates with courteous reverence will not fight over trivial things, but will nourish and cherish each other as Christ loves and treats the church. And finally, even a great marriage is still only a means to an end, and not the end in itself. It can never feed us life's ultimate hunger. And hopefully, we will always respond to Christ. And then that gospel, they asked Jesus, to whom shall we go? And what the scripture is saying today to all of us is we go to Christ with that encouragement and also Christ being our model in what we say and do. With that thought in mind, we will stand now for our priest. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose the King of the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. And there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life of the last Amen. You may stand in for the prayer of people. The response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For the church, witness to God's mercy and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations working for the peace and well-being of all citizens, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering, and for those who care for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered at St. Aloysius Parish in faith, hope, and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of Haiti, for those who lost their lives, those injured and those who mourn. We pray to the Lord. 
especially Caroline Guimont, Marguerite Guimont, Shirley McCarthy, Clarice Mascarenas, John Henry, Monica Ballard, Myrna Nicole, Bobby Squires, and Georgette Williams, who is in IC. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray in a special way for Doreen and Frank Rodriguez, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. As well, we pray for the healing of little Pierce Mercorsi, 22 months. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For our own personal and private intentions, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask Mother Mary to join us in our petitions. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We also got a note from uh, young Gears' grandmother, and she sent a picture of him. And she says in this letter, he is the sweetest of the sweet. Maybe you have to imagine you want to take a look at an absolute painting when you look at that picture. Here. Okay? And again, keep those in your prayer to make this prayer the Lord's name all of that. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness we have this red wall. Which earth is given, human hands made, is going to come for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And by the mystery of wine and water, may we come to share with the divinity of Christ, who humbles himself to share our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine waffle, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, the good come for us, our spiritual drink. Blessings be God forever. forever. And the humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. So us, O Lord, from my iniquity, cleanse us of our sins, our faults, and our failures. And pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. People by adoption to the one sacrifice offered once after all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church and our lives. And we ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Come up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. It is truly. Right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son Jesus Christ, your word to whom we made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, a part of the Holy Spirit.
Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Fulfilling your will and gave for you a holy people, he stretched out his hand as he endured his passion, so as to make the cause of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we have done. Holy, 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 so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and in his willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take us all, eat up, for this is my body which will be given up for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once for giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink of it. But this is the chalice of our blood, the blood of the new eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Peace 
and you in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with all of you. And, and with your spirit. Once again, we give that sign of peace. And may the name of the body of love, our Lord Jesus Christ, bring eternal life to us to receive. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. O Lamb of God, you all damn who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called for the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter on my room. Only we say the word, my soul shall come to you. May the body of the Christ bring us to the last of us. Amen, Johnny. Prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please visit our Facebook page. There's a photo of Piers that has been put up and it's all in color, it's beautiful. Please continue to pray for him and his family. There are two birthdays 
on the 28th. Joe Hayden and Bobby Squires. There is one anniversary on the 25th. Nancy and Mike Laporte. Stay safe. Have a wonderful week ahead. And uh, you got less us all. We stand great. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you. And may you feel God's love enfolding you. May that love keep you strong in faith. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit Amen. be always upon you. Amen. Amen. So let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Have a good day. You too.